Okay, I'm uh, Mary Rose. Eagleson is my last name. E-H-E-L-E-S-O-N. And um, I've lived in this house for 40 years. My husband died three years ago. I have uh, six children, one adopted, seven altogether. And uh, they're in and out. They marry and separate and come back and live with their boyfriends and come back and go out and come back. And at the moment, I would say I have two living at home out of the seven. Two boys and five girls. Well, what's your uh, relationship to the, the trial that's taking place in Norristown right now? Well, it's um, very recent. I, uh, I've heard of the Bergen brothers like almost everybody else has, and I've always been very sympathetic to whatever they stand for. So without knowing anything much about nuclear buildup, just because they were against it, I automatically became against it without thinking. It was just a reflex. But uh, then I started to think, yeah, wow, they're really right. I don't know why everybody's not thinking how close to annihilation we all are. And uh, the way I got involved with it was that one of my daughters went to um, the festival in town in Philadelphia that they had in January and um, at the Unitarian Church. And she um, signed me up when they asked for support. I wasn't even there. And she just said, you know, my mother will do it. <laughs> like when they're in first grade and who's going to bake for the brownie meeting? <laughs> my mom. So uh, she came home and she said, I signed you up um, for hospitality or anything you could do. So I called up and I was delighted, absolutely privileged and thrilled to, uh, to be able to offer because I do have some empty beds now and uh, empty rooms. And um, so they called me back and said, that would I have room for the uh, Rush family? And I said, how many are in the Rush family? And they said, six children. I said, oh, wow, great. <laughs> so um, the first night of the trial, last Sunday, they, uh, well, the night previous to the, the um, opening session, um, they were all here, the whole family, and that was great because Molly hadn't been, uh, well, with them for a long time at least. Uh, she had been down here for a week, I think, or in New York or someplace previously. So they spent that night together, and then uh, Molly was here several nights with the, other, with the other members of the family, and then on a few nights she stayed with the uh, eight, plowshares eight, at the Bower Lines house up in Ambler. So uh, that's how I got involved, and now I feel like they're really part of the family. I, you know, I tell the kids to pick up their clothes and take their medicine or whatever else has to be done. And uh, so it's Molly Rush and, and her family staying. Mm-hmm. Right. And you, have you had any contact with the other defendants? Uh, John Shushart was here last uh, Sunday night, and uh, he came down with Molly, and then. Uh, I have a daughter, Molly, and it's really confusing. People call and ask for Molly, and I naturally think they're talking about my daughter. And a few of them have been out of town, you know, long-distance calls for Molly Rush. And I don't know why I'd forget that Molly Rush is here, but my daughter is here also, you see. So that's been a little bit confusing. How many children do you have here now? Well, I have two, um, two daughters here now, and then one, uh, my grandson, is living with me. Another daughter is uh, separated from her husband. She has four children, and they were here for a year and a half after the separation. And then she, she moved out um, in uh, December, and the oldest boy chose to stay here. So it's just around the corner. It's nothing traumatic or anything like that, but he has more room here. Yeah, the one point that I'd like to kind of pursue is you said that um, you hadn't thought too much about the nuclear I really environment haven't. issue. And then... Somehow, because the Berrigans were involved, they uh, triggered it for me, really. Maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Uh, yeah. Well, I think uh, everybody knows about the nuclear buildup. I mean, how could you not know it? And nobody is screaming except a handful of people are saying, stop it, this is nonsense. And everybody should be going around saying the sky is falling, you know, like Chicken Little. And I don't hear anybody doing it. And then when I, I wasn't doing it. I was like everybody else, half asleep, I guess. 
And then uh, when the Plowshares 8 came into being, I started to pay attention. And then I thought what they were doing was great. And I don't think I could do what Molly's doing. I don't think I could. That's why I'm happy to stay in the background and let her do the hard stuff. I'll just offer my house. That's real easy. But uh, it takes a certain kind of um, dedication and commitment and conviction, all those great words, to do what she's doing. And uh, mine aren't that deep or strong, I guess. Do you think the defendants that are doing what they're doing for themselves or for others? That's a great question. I don't know. I think people who are driven by an outside force, whatever you want to call it, cannot help themselves. They can't stop it. And I'm very sympathetic to that. So they're doing what they want to do. To that extent, they're doing it for themselves. But in the larger picture, they're really doing it for mankind, and I really believe that. When you say they're being driven by an outside force, what do you mean by that? I think when you're powerless to do something, I mean, you, you can't stop yourself because it seems so right. It feels right. And I think for Molly, it feels right for her to be doing what she's doing, even though she's going through some agony insofar her, as her family is concerned. But this is even bigger than that, or she wouldn't be doing it. I think if something's bigger than your own family, it's pretty big. That's a pretty strong feeling she must have, and conviction. I've never had anything that would move me from my family, but I'm not saying I wouldn't. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't been Molly Rush. I really don't know. I don't think anybody knows what they do unless they're driven by the same compulsion. I think some people are really driven. I mean, the the great creators of the world are driven people. The, the artists, the musicians, the saints, the martyrs, the, the um, political heroes through history are simply driven human beings. And that's what they, they make history there. Hmm. But I wonder what that driving force is, if it can be. It's a lot of energy is what it is. You know? I don't know which comes first. Creativity creates the energy, or the energy makes the creativity. I've always wondered that. I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of mutual feeding process and being creative and being energetic. Yeah. But the great, the great people of history have all been uh, people with tremendous energy. Do you think these are great people? I do. I really do. And uh, what do you think the effect of this trial would be? on society, culture, and our future? Well, I think people are paying attention. I think the people who uh, live near the um, nuclear installations are protesting. And that's to be expected, the Three Mile Island people and in Limerick, here in Montgomery County, those people are protesting because they know the danger is really imminent to them. But it's imminent to everybody. I mean, we should all be screaming as loud as they are, because there's no such thing as non-imminent, I guess, when you come to this kind of power. And uh, the effect um, has to be, it has to hit Washington somehow um, before it's going to diminish. I. I'm not real hopeful, to tell you the truth, about it hitting Washington. I think that there's too, there's too much um, power there that... I don't know why they're not waking up. I don't know why they don't understand this. That they're going to annihilate themselves. Well, uh, I, I don't understand it. I really don't. And I have no idea what the effect is going to be. I do think protests are effective. But to what extent they're effective, I don't know. Well, the, the word itself, protest, seems to have some kind of significant any idea what it might be. I mean, this is pro, seems to be, I mean, I may be completely wrong, but pro seems to mean for. Mm -hmm. And test seems to be some kind of testament or some kind of statement, so some kind of positive statement. Mm -hmm. 
So it's a witness, really, I guess, isn't it, to what you believe? Yeah. For some reason, we always see protest in terms of it being a uh, reaction to something mm -hmm. positive. And, and I never thought about that, and here I'm a great Latin student. I should have thought <laughs> of that. <laughs> so you, yeah, so with all this stuff, do you, I mean, do you feel that these protesters, in a certain sense, are making some kind of positive act? Or are they just reacting to history as it's happening? I think they're the same thing. I think to react to history as it's happening is a positive act. I think maybe a better word would be an agitator. I mean, they're agitating against what is because they want it to change and they want to irritate higher power, you know, to say, look, we, we can't take this any longer. We want it to stop and we want it to stop now. And these people are, um, I think, uh, especially um, to be admired because they're doing it in a nonviolent way. And that's the long haul, the nonviolent way, I think, is a very long uh, process. Can you describe maybe how you've been affected by your own relationship to uh, the whole situation? Like, uh, you have given some description of that, but. In terms of Molly being here and how that's intensified your own experience? Well, I relate to Molly um, not so much as a political figure, but as a, another woman with a large family. And I want her to relax while she's here and to feel at home. And so I try not to ask her questions that she's being asked all the time. And I tell her how great her kids are, and I talk about her children, and I'm hoping that will be relaxing for her because I think she's under a terrible lot of strain. And I'd rather try to let her have as uh, peaceful and relaxed a time as she can and to make this a real home for her. And I think I get a sense that maybe she's feeling that. And her husband also, although he's, you know, going back and forth with the children. He's trying to stay on top of the news and he's trying to get the uh, kids into the courtroom and he's doing all the legal things that have to be done for that. He's really on top of everything. He's a terrific guy. And uh, anybody who thinks he's not behind Molly doesn't read him right. He's really behind her 100%. Although he says he wasn't always, you know. Who would be? You know, what husband wants to see his wife in such a dangerous position as she's putting herself in? Well, you think these people are criminals? No. I don't. Who's, then who's on trial? If they're not criminals, then why is there a trial in the first place? Well, they have broken in, and they have admitted it. And if that's a crime, then they're criminals, yeah. They have broken into the GE plant, and they have spilled blood on, on the uh, missiles there as a symbolic act. And if that's a crime, then they're criminals. I think it's a symbolic gesture that probably... Uh, a lot of people don't want to see repeated, and I think that they have to do this to show the example that this is not the way to behave in a so-called uh, sane society. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's very good. Yeah. Thank you.